What's up guys, this is going to be a collective scouting report on the four club series winners from the Seahawks, Jets, Bills, and Dolphins events. The winners include known quantities such as Killer Mike and Blocky, along with up-and-comers Point Spread and Don't Care About Ice. The Cardinals, Patriots, and Jaguars club series have also already been decided, but I've already covered Skimbo, the Cardinals series is slightly outdated, and Wild just won the Jags club series yesterday. So let's go ahead and kick things off with Killer Mike. And Killer Mike rose to prominence last year by winning the Seattle Club Series and is the first repeat champ for this year. Mike ran a heavy gun bunch based scheme out of the Los Angeles Raiders playbook. Out of his 72 offensive plays, 43 of them came from gun bunch for just under 60% of his play calls. He ended up running three plays a double digit amount of times those plays being bunch trail, Y curl, and halfback base, which accounted for roughly 53% of his plays. Mike's gun bunch approach was definitely less standard as it didn't include normal staples such as corner strike, PA post, and the like. His main complementary formation was the gun Y trips formation, where he strictly either ran inside zone or PA post shot. To round out his offense, he turned to the gun trio offset formation a total of 11 times, 9 of which he ended up running inside zone. Essentially, Mike kept his opponents honest by threatening runs such as HP base or inside zone while leaning on a select few passing plays when needing to go to the air. Defensively, Mike turned to the 4-3 wide 9 cover 4 50 times throughout 2 games, accounting for 58.82% of his defensive snaps. The interesting thing is that he was running it stock almost every single play, rush four linemen, drop four defenders deep, adjust flat defenders depending on down and distance or opponent tendencies, and then user the intermediate to short middle. To complement this coverage style defense, he went to the 4-3 under and 4-3 over plus formations where he liked to send cover two style overload zone blitzes. Mix in a couple of other niche plays along with some 4-6 bear in the red zone, and that is the defensive scheme that won Mike the Seattle championship. Next up, we have Don't Care About Ice, the winner of the Jets event. Ice ran an extremely gun-bunch dominant scheme out of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playbook that is reminiscent of Joke's initial scheme before he switched over to West Coast at the beginning of this year. His most called play was corner strike with 18 selections, but as you can see he also called 4 other plays a double digit amount of times. This being the case, it actually doesn't come as a surprise that Ice came out in gun bunch just under 95% of the time. In fact, he only ran 4 total plays that weren't in gun bunch out of goal line and the single back wing pair formations. Despite the heavy reliance on plays that are usually high percentage passes with safe reads, he struggled throughout the air, going 24 for 43 for 314 yards with one touchdown and three interceptions. With the air game struggling, he was able to sustain drives through a consistent ground attack where Tevin Coleman averaged a healthy 4.14 yards per carry throughout the tournament. Defensively, Ice may have had the most unique approach of all the competitors, resorting to a 4-3 normal Tampa 2 look about 94% of the time where he sent a 3-man overload while dropping 8 into coverage with a pre-snap look that looked a lot like the nickel blitz of the past. He actually never left the 4-3 normal formation throughout the entire tournament and only called a play that did not contain a 2-deep shell once. With Ice's offensive struggles, his defense definitely stepped up to the plate to outlast AKG in the semis where he then proceeded to give franchise fits in the finals. The third competitor will be point spread who literally ran his way to the Buffalo Bills championship with the legs of Mike Vick. This was the first big showing of the bunch quads QB draw at a major event and it did not disappoint. Boasting a 72 to 28 run to pass ratio, the most lopsided of the field, he gashed the opposition for 286 yards on the ground, 192 of which came from Mike Vick and the QB draw. Despite a majority of his yardage coming from that play, it was actually Gun Bunch Halfback Strong that ended up being his most called formation and the read option that was his most called play with 15 calls. The duo of Bunch Quads and Bunch Halfback Strong accounted for 64.52% of his play calls with most of the remaining plays being miscellaneous runs from various formations. 
It was clear that he wanted to establish the run with plays like read option and quarterback draw, and then rely on Z-spot out of both bunch formations as his primary passing concept. In fact, he literally only called one passing play that was not named Z-spot, and that play was curl combo out of gun doubles halfback week. This culminated in only 100 yards to the air, where he went 7 for 11 with no touchdowns or interceptions. It will be interesting to see how point spread adapts in a competition in which his opponents have an answer for his rushing attack. Defensively, point spread mainly stuck to 3-4 odd staples, Tampa 2 and cover 4 Mike, both accounting for over 57% of his play calls combined. He liked to send a delayed linebacker blitz that comes through the A-gap out of the Tampa 2, which he complemented with the ever-popular 3-3-5 odd linebacker cross 3 show 2. Ultimately, he was in 3-4 odd for just over 80% of his plays, which does not seem to be uncommon these days with the rise of the cross 3 fire blitz and seemingly fall of other usual favorites such as Dollar. Now last but not least we have Blocky, winner of the Dolphins Club Series. Blocky also ran a very gun bunch centric scheme out of the West Coast playbook in which he called corner strike 4 times as much as any other passing play. He was incredibly pass heavy and would have been even more so had he not rushed the ball the entire second half of his semifinal matchup, a blowout against Mr. Miami Man. His biggest plays were the usual suspects from the West Coast Gun Bunch with the aforementioned corner strike, along with halfback draw, dig halfback out, PA post, mesh, and mesh post accounting for 56 of his 76 play calls. Blocky was generally just incredibly consistent and disciplined, rarely making a bad read throughout his matches and taking what the defense gave him. Something to note is that out of his 24 corner strike calls, 20 of them came with the bunch side of the formation on the short side of the field. This alignment has been speculated to perform better against 91 zone defenders, which does seem to be the case. Now the downside is that this can lead to some major formation tendencies, so it's definitely something to note going into the future. Defensively, Blocky ran an aggressive nickel 335 Tampa 2 style defense for the majority of the tournament, only really shying away from it in garbage time or in the red zone where he seemed to prefer cover 3. Nonetheless, 335 Tampa 2 accounted for 67% of his defensive plays where he mixed up blitzing a variety of linebackers and cornerbacks. This defense can be tough to get a read on because of the variance of the blitzers and the effectiveness of seemingly every blitz combo. Now, Something interesting about all four of these competitors is that they all relied on primary schemes from bunch formations, three from gun bunch weak and one from a combo of gun bunch halfback strong and bunch quads. This clearly suggests that the offensive meta still seems rather stable for now through the early part of the year, although the introduction of custom audibles on the most recent patch will certainly shake things up. Between all competitors, Corner Strike was the most commonly called play, while defensively Tampa 2 was by far the most popular coverage scheme, with Cover 4 coming in at a comfortable second. This seems to suggest a decline in the early popularity of the Crossfire style blitzes, but I don't think they will go away that easily. So that's going to wrap up this video guys, if you enjoyed this video definitely subscribe for more content like this, comment and let me know what you guys thought. And as always, thanks for watching.